You look beautiful from inside out, no matter your age, no matter your ethnicity. But have you noticed that some people just look a little bit more put together? What are their secrets? This is why in this video, I'm going to present you 10 things that cheapen your natural beauty and most important, how to fix it. Let's go. Hi, I'm Frederic. If you're new, welcome to my channel. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. I'm trying to reach the 200, my dream. I need your help for that. Click, 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 click. Thank you so much. Give big thumbs up. So let's start with number one, which is the foundation. And the foundation of your skin, of course. Your skin is so important. Either way, if you have some acne problem like me in my teenage years, or you have sunspot, you're losing collagen, and what you want to do in those cases and have been there is to cover up with heavy makeup oh no no don't do that so how can you fix it first of all really it's worth it the um the time and the investment you have to go to see a gp for a referral please ladies if you haven't done it yet at least please go to see a dermatologist only a dermatologist can really tell you what's the problem with your skin, how to fix it, prescribe you the proper um, cream for your face, and it just is definitely going to help you. And they're also going to help you how to maintain your healthy skin. Do not forget as well, a lot of people who have problems with the skin, outside of not use, wearing SPF and if you go to the sun, it's also the food. So stay away of any processed food, sugar, sugar is a killer for everything. Think about eating more vegetables and healthy food, definitely is going to reflect on your skin as well. Personally, outside of being in front of a camera, during my days when I'm not filming, I can tell you I wear a little, almost minimal, makeup I just wear sometimes a bit of illuminator with my moisturizer a little bit of foundation always a little bit of concealer because I have dark circles mascara and I'm done I'm more like to have like a glowing skin and like you you know my, my skin is not perfect but I totally accept that and I'm happy with it part of this video is currently sponsored by current body who specialize in beauty devices so this is what you utilize for the face and this is what it looks like for the neck, you know, and for the décolletage and you got those little lights. And I notice every time I'm using it and I'm applying some oil to absorb, I can tell my, my skin texture is smoother. So not only is good for your skin, it's good for collagen, it's good for wrinkles, but also for uh, a dark or pigmentation or sunspot. It's good for almost everything and 95% have of users already saw some improvement after using it for four weeks. So if you have to do use it minimum for four weeks to start seeing, I'm taking pictures before in a natural light with no makeup um, every week to just to see if it really improves. This is a must have. I will link definitely everything for you in the description box below. Plus you will have a coupon and you can get 20% off on all those devices Plus, guess what? You're gonna have a gift. So it's a win-win. I highly, highly recommend it. You have to be patient with it, but I'm so happy not to having it. And you will see, I'm gonna look younger and younger every time I film a new video. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Current Body, for sponsoring this video. I'm so, so happy. I think you have a great product and always happy to talk about it and try it. I still see some women wearing the coal or the crayon in a wrong way. Have you noticed some women put the coal really dark in the inner eyes there? That's a big no-no in makeup. First of all, if you do that, it's gonna make you look harder. It's gonna shrink your eyes that usually they're probably they're really big and beautiful, I imagine. <laughs> it makes you look tired, outdated. If you do that, it's okay, but please stop right now. Personally, on my makeup, I'm always, um, concentrating on the top eyelids because I like having this lift. My face is not lifted anymore. I can't do anything about gravity, but I can try to cheat a little bit with makeup. So I'm always concentrating on the top, a bit of a crayon, a bit of a smudge, mascara, and this is why I will never put anything dark. And to make your eyes a little bit bigger, always what I will do as well is to use whatever it's a white or natural 
cool or crayon to put inside just to make your eyes a little bit bigger and never forget for any type of makeup always go upwards always go up always go lifted you know just like oh look at that i look 10 years younger <laughs> less is more in makeup do not follow those ladies in their 20s on social media when they have tons of makeup i never understood that so I, I went out not long time ago and the girls were queuing they were all in the 20s all taking selfies probably instagrammers i never seen so much makeup on the face of someone I, I don't understand it doesn't look good guys don't like it i don't like it so less is more in makeup so to avoid to look a bit too tarty especially if your skin is not perfect or you have maybe some zits or you know it's gonna really highlight that so my recommendation if you like me in terms of minimal makeup try a bb cream bb cream are fantastic and you can have a bit of a bronzer over it or as i said already mix a bit with an illuminator with your foundation just to give this natural glow but you don't have to do the contouring the baking the powder the I don't even know what else they're doing you know it's just it's not necessary less is more your natural beauty is there you don't have to hide it behind tons of tons and coats of makeup oh fake eyelashes i already talked about it in some of my videos that were linked below by the way but any type of first of all fake eyelashes for me i wore them a few times it took me an hour to put them and then the glue is is ripping off my, my real eyelashes they itchy they heavy they itch they're just a scratchy whatever it's not my thing i tried as well extension eyelashes only once years ago it was a total disaster it's very expensive and i never understood those women who have very very heavy eyelashes what i would recommend instead to look more chic and elevated is to take care already of what you already have so for your eyelashes is first of all remove your makeup no matter what before going to bed wash everything put your moisturizer your serum not in this uh, uh, order and just take care of your skin drink plenty of water obviously but what i like to do is to use eyelash serum the one i use is vegan and i always applying on the top of eyelashes and whatever i have left on the wand i putting on my eyebrows because i don't want to lose all my hair on my eyebrows and this is the secret sometimes it takes long time it takes already between three to six months for my eyelashes to become normal but all those mascara well i, I put a little bit of mascara today but this is all natural. You will never see me with fake eyelashes ever. <laughs> Another mistake I've seen as well with some people is to apply the same makeup technique that you used to do like 30 years ago or even 20 years ago. You know, for example, in the 90s, it was really fashionable to have thin eyebrows, heavy makeup and different colors, orange, pink. In the 90s, everything was very colorful, if I do remember. So what I'm saying, you don't need to do the full game. You don't need to do the eyelashes and the eyeshadows and the eyeliner and the crayon and the smudge it and the, the, the whinging line. And I mean, wow, that's way too much. Same for the skin, the foundation and whatever they do, the concealer, the this is way too much and it's hiding again your natural beauty so of course with age we have different problems mine are dark circles so that i will definitely put some concealer but again i'm applying sometime with my clean fingers or a little bit with a sponge and i use some bronzer because i like having bronzer this is my makeup this is the glow but that's it like i said before outside of the camera if you see me sometime in the street you will be surprised i almost wear no makeup every morning i walk my dog and last time it was a lady just crossing it was barely 6 30 in the morning and just cross it and she was wearing a very heavy perfume but to the point i have to cover my nose because the trail of perfume of smell she was leaving behind it was like a strong vanilla something and i thought oh i almost wanted to gag and i do not exaggerate and i love perfume so yes heavy perfume cheap perfume or the perfume who doesn't suit your lifestyle your style 
is not is definitely gonna play against you uh, personally I ruin my skin with perfume so I got a tip for you because a perfume have alcohol and if you live in a country with a lot of sun such as Australia South Africa maybe California I didn't say New York or, to or Toronto <laughs> sorry girls <laughs> but with the the sun and I show that to my dermatologist um, it, I'm having like pigmentation now and it's not much I can do about it so if you put perfume I don't I've done many videos about that put behind your ears behind your neck and try to avoid your neck also another tip if you put some moisturizer or Vaseline inside of your wrist or anywhere else and you perfume on it it will last much longer I'm not here to tell you which type of perfume you should wear. I'm just said, if you're not into that, but you still love smelling good, then do not perfume yourself. Maybe use like a, a body moisturizer that it has a good scent. Or if you do like the French women, which is almost like a BS, okay? You perfume in the air and you plunge in it. Um, never, never perfume your hair because it's got alcohol, it's gonna damage your hair. And what I love to do is sometimes perfuming the clothes or even in a wardrobe or when I pack a suitcase, I like to put a little bit of perfume and I close it and when I open, it smells good and that's my thing. For the lips, okay. Um, I've seen so many women, <sighs> the young one, the older one, it doesn't matter, using way too much filler. And when you have too much filler, the size of your lips are not in proportion for the rest of your face and you can tell obviously it, it's just too much. You want to have some injection in your lips because for me for example when I'm losing volume and my lips on the top are not totally symmetric, that's your choice. It's very personal so I'm not here to tell you what you should do or not. I'm just said go easy with it. Same when you use some lip liner. I've noticed some women will use a dark lip liner which will shrink your lips anyway and they put way too much lipstick. It, it just doesn't look good. What I love to do personally is to use a white crayon, the same I use in my eyes, and I highlight my top lips and a little bit underneath. I'm smudge it just to give a bit of a highlight. The, for the lipstick, I rarely apply a full coat of um, lipstick because it's too heavy for me. I like having a bit of lipstick and smudge it with my fingers and then I put a bit of a gloss and I'm hoping they will do the job and it's never perfect but I prefer not having a bit of a kind of effect that I bite my own lips and it looks almost natural than heavy, heavy lipstick because not only will age you, it will make you look not modern, outdated and it's just not pretty. It's not pretty and wonderful and I'm not talking about the one who's doing the lips outside of your natural line and I was thinking it's just like I'm thinking drag queen straight away just like you know even some girls on in, on, on Instagram I'm like she looks like a drag queen this is not femininity anymore because I talk about fillers of course I'm happy to talk about injection again this is a total personal choice but if you do some Botox to remove some wrinkles to rest a bit or relax a bit you face Absolutely, I do myself, you know, but I never do way too much because I want to keep expression of my face. I still have wrinkles, I still almost look my age, I'm not sure, but that's not going to, it's just going to slow down a little bit the um, aging process, I'm hoping. Some people need Botox for more medical reason, but some women use way too much Botox when they look way too surprised or nothing is moving on their face. And I've seen lately an actress that I'm not going to name, but when she talks, the top lip is not moving. And I'm like, something is wrong. And it's like, I don't know if this is happening. <laughs> it's just, it's not moving. So please, doing that with moderation, be nice with yourself, Still, you still have to look like yourself, okay? And, and also it's very expensive. And another note as well, because I know a lot of ladies who are following me have a thyroid issue like me, I have Hashimoto. And unfortunately with the medication we're taking in Hashimoto, any type of fillers and Botox will last less. So some women need only to touch up every three, four months and I will need to do a little bit more if I really want to look frozen. But I still got my wrinkles, I still got my expression. 
Shh, don't say anyone. <laughs> Another thing that I believe that it will definitely cheapen your natural beauty is having bad eyebrows. So it doesn't matter the style, but I definitely seen, you know, we've done a lot of mistake with the eyebrows. We pluck it too much, doesn't grow anymore. But unfortunately, your eyebrows are so important because they are the frame of your face. I have to say that, but it's true. Having proper symmetric eyebrows, they so so important so either way you can obviously use a crayon i like using a crayon eyeshadow sometimes but i also see one or twice per year a specialist for that and um she's doing with the symmetry she's touching i got a lot of scars in my eyebrows so she's touching up with a bit of macro bedding and tattooing but i still got a bit of hair so i'm still lucky because i'm giving a lot of food to my eyebrows with the eye serum so i don't know if it's working but i'm still trimming my eyebrows once per week i have to cut it they, they were they're growing very weird so definitely that's something i will highly recommend um, to invest to see a specialist please do your homeworks before because some people turns out to be really bad where it looks like big black sticky tape or it, it just looks too strong for the face or it's too thin too thick too too dark whatever but do but if you're really not happy with your eyebrows it's something you got, you can fix it doing that with a professional please do put the price on it don't do that for the 50 dollars i don't know if you can do that for 50 bucks but it's a reason it's on your face it's important but when you have nice eyebrows it definitely gonna make you look not only younger fresher and definitely um a little bit more elevated as well so stop touching your eyebrows go to see a specialist first and then you're gonna get some professional help of course your nails are so important your hands your nails because if you're like me you took a lot with your hands and if you don't you work so people are going to check your hands no matter what so personally i like short nails for the moment because they break quite easily but i do my own manicure but for the ladies who have this long nail hair um nail art, art nail you know with a lot of decoration on it i think it's pretty i think it's totally unpractical i don't even know what they're doing in their life because even with short nails personally i cheap them all the time but yes clean nails properly manicured if you don't have the budget for that do like me doing that at home it, it takes really not a long time and it takes a lot of practice to apply you on to paint you on nails but you know what it's really worth it i saved hundreds of dollars per year doing my own nails and also your hands i know for some because i had the same issues um in some countries when the sun is really really hot and really aggressive like australia you the uv is can really damage your skin much is much faster than if i were living in france and when i'm driving i notice in the last 10 years i have pigmentation on my hands and um i went to see a dermatologist at the beginning of the year so i had a couple of laser treatment not a happy moment i'm going to tell you but it's worth it and as well they did a quick one on my hands and it cost like because i was doing my face but i think it was an extra 60 of 100 australian dollars and it removed all the stains of my hands it was a long process it took quite few weeks that the pigmentations back to the surface it's still not perfect i'm always having an spf in my glove box in the car always because sometimes i'm wearing the the steel wheel like that you know and i'm just like i got the sun and i'm thinking oh my gosh my pigmentation my hands gonna look old always hydrate your, your hands but having nice hands i mean man a tiny fat sausages but i think having pigmentation on your hands let me know in the comment section if you have some pigmentation any spot um, sunspot that you have they age you much faster they don't make you look good we do not like them anyway so go to see a dermatologist because it's quite actually an easy fix little bit painful i'm not going to lie but it's really worth it you're always asking me question about my makeup of the day if i might say that so i will link here and as well in the description box below 
a link to my beauty list because I have a quite a few makeup look that you can recreate easily at home. And I want to thank again Current Body for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the link. And uh, I wish you a fantastic day. You are beautiful, my darling. You take care. I see you to the next video. Ciao, ciao.